Hey everyone and welcome to week five of my creator video log. Today I have eight different projects to show you that I worked on this week and so let's just jump right into it. Uh, first of all I finished off the pillow that I was working on and put it into a pillow form, the Starling pillow that I showed you last week that I have a whole kit for the, the big full-size quilt. And even though I can see lots of mistakes, places where it's off, places where the points don't line up, I actually think it looks really, really good. When you just look at it, it's not, the mistakes are not super duper obvious, even to me. I'm actually really happy with it and actually feeling really good about doing the whole big quilt. Although I do wanna just, continue to like I am with my koalas I just want to keep working on my diagonal seams and get those as nice as possible so that's in my pillow form I did that I finished the binding and what I ended up doing is I just decided to do um, let's see I sewed it to the front and then flipped it over and then I did a, and then I did a little zigzag stitch just to try something new for the binding I did a zigzag stitch with the invisible clear nylon thread Okay, and then I made these ornaments. So these are a Kimberbell design that they just came out with. Actually, they're jar, they're holiday jar toppers. And instead I put them into a hoop. I did the wide mouth version and placed them in a hoop to use as ornaments. So I did one of those for each member of my family because we do a new ornament every year. And this way I can make them instead of buying them. And then I worked on my koalas quilt a little bit more. I now have eight koalas done. So I did the the lime green koala. There's that guy. And then an emerald green koala. Looks very similar to the turquoise, but slightly different. And then uh, my son wanted me to make him another shy guy. So I made him a little blue guy. And then the, I made this red guy few weeks ago but I never I didn't get to show them on my creator vlog now the red guy was I used different yarn I used I think red heart super saver which is a lot thicker and the yarn that I used for the blue is actually number three weight so totally different yarn weights so they came out different sizes which I warned my son ahead of time this guy was gonna be smaller and he is happy he's happy with how he turned out he's got his little purple feet so he's got a bunch of shy guys now and another thing I did is in our church, we baptize children when they turn eight or, or older. And what we've done is we've, we bought these really great blankets at Costco. And so I'm able to embroider their name and their baptism date on the blankets. This one's already wrapped up with the ribbon, but it's got her name and her baptism date on there embroidered on. So then we give them this really nice full size cozy blanket and then they have that to remember their baptism date by and then it's just a special gift that we give them as leaders of the children's organization in our church. And then yesterday I went to one of the local quilt shops in person just so that I would have more space. They had a stitch day and so I wanted to take advantage of that and do some of my big things that needed to be done. So I did the Kimberbell Make Yourself at Home quilt that I have been working on forever. I finally, finally got the borders put on. So because I could spread out on their big tables at the store, it's much easier to work on these big projects. So there's an inner border that I sewed on yesterday and then I sewed on the outer border. I did I just got that, all that done yesterday. And I think it's pretty straight, which is not one of my strong suits. I think it looks pretty good. And this project has been in the works for a couple years at least. So I got that done and the other thing I was able to get done at the quilt shop is I was able to get the binding sewed onto the front for this other big size quilt. And this is one of my COVID quilts 
that I made during COVID when, COVID when we were all in quarantine and it's called Corsage. And I knew even less about what I was doing when I made these and it's pretty wonky. I had to trim down the border quite a bit to try to get it as square as I could. So I was able to get the border sewed on and then I probably will just end up hand sewing or maybe paying one of my friends to hand sew the binding to the back because I've tried so I've tried all the methods and I just keep coming back to that looks the best. I've tried gluing, I've tried zigzag, I've tried stitching in the ditch from the front. I've tried sewing it onto the back and flipping it over and then doing a nice top stitch. And those are all okay, but it's but the quilts that I've done where I think I've really only done one where I've stitched it to the front, flipped it and then hand stitched and that was the first quilt I ever did for my older daughter. That really is the cat's meow. That is the creme de la creme. Looks the best. Turns out the best. Turns out just so beautiful. And then the last thing I made is I made a zipper pouch that has a little pocket for a mini composition notebook. So you can keep track of scores or notes on the game because it's meant for say a card game or some other or or um a pouch for dice or some other kind of game like that. So a zipper pouch, but then it's got this extra pocket on the front that's got us closes with a snap tab. And I made that for my son because he invented his own card game called Uno Crazy. And he was just using a, just a paper box that he had made. So I knew that was gonna fall apart really quickly. So I wanted to make him something that's gonna hold up a little bit better. And that is, uh, oh, that's almost everything I worked on this week. The other thing I, I realized, well, now it's December 1st and I haven't made my countdown to Christmas pillow. Now this is a little, this will be a little round pillow and you do embroidered numbers. And this is actually a piece of vinyl. So you can slide the numbers in. So it says countdown to Christmas and then you put how many days. You slide the numbers in to this little pocket to say how many days until Christmas. This ended up being a big fight and I'm starting this whole thing over, which is nuts because it's like 36,000 stitches and I was on the last step when it really got to the point where I don't think I can save it. First, it screwed up when it was doing this white stitching on top of the green letters. It did count down fine. And then on Christmas, it got shifted somehow. I don't know how because it didn't bump the wall and it's shifted down. So it stitched out the white below where it should have been. So then I unpicked some and redid it, but then, so some are some areas are doubled. I didn't unpick everything. Some of it's doubled. Anyway, I thought I could salvage it or do another one as a gift and redo, redo one for me and give this one as a gift because other people won't know. People who don't do embroidery won't even notice. However, when I went to do the last stitch, which is the white on the candy canes, the detailing, it tore the sticky back tearaway stabilizer and made a huge, huge, huge mess in my bobbin case and ended up being like a big, thick wad of thread under there that I had to fight to get off and take apart, take off the bobbin case and the stitch plate and everything and had to Anyway, it was actually really hard to get it off my machine because there was this, it was caught in the stitch plate. And then all, and now all of this is all torn here. So I could tape all that, but I don't know if I really trust it. And then I would still have to unpick some of this white where it went wrong. And I'm not sure that I trust my tape to even be strong enough to fix that. So I'm not totally sure what I'm gonna do with that. I do have another piece of this same fabric in my stash that I could use to just start this over. So I think I'll do that and then I'll just leave this aside and I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet. I decided to sleep on it last night and then I had a, a fresh mess to deal with this morning. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I didn't, also I didn't work on my holiday village at all this week because it sounds silly, but I don't want to finish it because the projects are so cute and so fun. Once I stitch out all the rest of the buildings, I won't have 
those projects to do. And I just love the little building. So I came to the realization that I don't actually want to finish it. So as I mean, they're, they're just so great. I don't want to have the projects done and then not have them to look forward to. So I don't know, the human mind and anticipation is such a complex thing. I'm not sure if when I'm going to do the holiday village now, because I initially wanted to finish it for December, but I've got a bunch more buildings, but I don't want to make them because then they'll be done and I can't, I can no longer look forward to making them or actually do the making. So I'm just in my own head right now about all of that stuff. So I'm going to, I'm going to retry this and then I will just have to decide what else I want to work on this week. I'll probably do some more koalas and some more Christmas projects, I think. And I do have some other bindings that I need to do that I have put off for so many years that I just want to get them done. So that'd be great if I could do that. I also have this really cute uh, Christmas tree pattern called Giving Tree. So I have a kit for that. And I actually really like sewing curves. So I'm, <coughs> excuse me, I'm really looking forward to doing that. So I might start that. And then um, I'm gonna keep working on my terrifying tower because I know my youngest really wants that done and I know there's I need to I need to get working on Christmas projects because now I only have three weeks really to get Christmas gifts done and we're doing uh we're doing homemade things for our for myself my husband and our four kids usually we give them cash and that's their budget and we each draw names and we each so we each have one other person in the family that we're buying for and this year with the economy being what it is we decided we're not going to do that we're going to do handmade stuff um we told them they could spend we we would give them like 20 to 30 if they need materials if there's stuff we don't have already but they can make something and my husband's got like a, a small woodworking shop in the garage I've got my machines, sewing, embroidery. I could help them with crochet stuff um, or really anything they can think of. We could we could figure out some materials for that. Um, but we've really got to get cracking on that and make sure everybody's got their stuff done. So I've got my older daughter who's 13 and I am not even really sure what I'm going to make for her yet. And because I'm making stuff for everyone, I've got to make extra for her or make her something extra super special because she's the name that I drew for this year so I've got to get cracking on all that so tell me what are your Christmas plans what are your favorite Christmas traditions and what are you doing this year to celebrate Christmas if you celebrate Christmas I would love for you to comment and tell me what your favorite project was and as I said, what you're doing for Christmas in your home. And I would love for you to like and subscribe if you haven't yet. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you.